is more or less constant. Doesn't matter how far away you are. Now, the way I'm going to do that is, of course, I don't have an infinite large plane. The plane that you're going to see is only a few square meters in size. And so it's only something like one by one meter, then it would only be true that the electric field is very close to constant. If I stay very close to that plane, the moment that I go out as far as a meter, of course, it's no longer true. So it's very qualitative what I'm going to show you. But you're going to see very shortly there a very large plane. We're going to get it in a few minutes. And let's assume that we look at that plane edge on. So here is that plane. Look at it from edge on. It will be put here. It will block your view. That's why we don't have it up now. And what I will do now is I will connect that with the Van de Graaff, which is behind it. If you wait a few minutes, then class will pay attention to me and not to you. Uh, here's the Van de Graaff. We're going to attach it to the Van de Graaff. And then we use this interesting fishing rod, which is a small Mylar balloon, which we will charge with the same charge as the Van de Graaff, so the same charge as the plate. And we will hold that in front of the plane. And then, of course, there will be a force. So here is my glass rod. This is the vertical. And because there will be a repelling force on this air-filled balloon, there will be an angle. There's an electric force on it because the two have the same charge. And this is the angle theta that I will show you projected on that wall. And when I move this away from this plane, you will see that the angle theta becomes smaller. Yes, of course, because look how small that plane is. No matter what I do, if I go from 20 to 40 centimeters, you can't really say that the plane is infinitely large compared to 40 centimeters. But you will see that the angle of theta will change very slowly. And then we will remove that plane, and then we will do exactly the same experiment, but we will use only the Van de Graaff, which produces now an electric field, and that electric field now falls off as 1 over r squared. It's not constant as a function of distance, but it falls off as 1 over r squared. This is a hollow sphere. So you can think of it as all the charge right at the center, as we demonstrate it. It's on the blackboard still here. You know, you get that amazing result. And so now, if I place this, if I place this fishing rod, this balloon, near the spherical Van de Graaff, you will see that this angle theta drops very fast when I start moving my hand away, extraordinarily fast. If I double the distance to the center, the force on that little object will become four times smaller. It's inverse r squared. So let's first do the plane, and then we'll try to do the, the uh, single Van de Graaff. And we'll try to optimize the light conditions, we have a projection here. There's a carbon arc, which will hopefully produce some light in that direction, if the carbon arc works. <laughs> Marco, oh, I forgot to turn on the power. <laughs> Thank you. So this carbon arc is coming on now, and you'll see there the shadows on that wall, see my hand, here is that plane, and it is far from infinitely large, that plane. If I were this far away from it, four centimeters, very close approximation, it would be infinitely large. But if I'm here and there, and that's where I will be, of course, it is not infinitely large anymore. So let's uh, start the Van de Graaff. You can't see, but I turn it on. It's rotating now. I have to put charge on here, so I'll touch it with the Van de Graaff. And so this is now charged. It has the same charge as the plane. The plane is being charged. And here you see the angle. Try to remember that angle. It's hard to estimate, maybe 15 degrees. You see the vertical. And if now I, it's about mm, 30 centimeters away from the plane. And if now I go back to 50 centimeters, which is where I'm now, you see the angle hasn't changed very much. If I go further out to 60 centimeters, yeah, the angle goes down a little. Of course it does, but not very much. 
And if I go far away, all the way to Mass Avenue, of course, the force on this little object would be inversely R squared, because then the whole plane would behave like a point source. So I've shown you that very close to this plane, the electric field stays approximately constant. So if now we remove this, Marcos, if you can, yeah, we'll have to take this also off. Thank you very much. So now we have the Van de Graaff alone. So now we know that the electric field falls off as 1 over r squared. That's a very good approximation now. We can think of the charge as being right at the center. I will give it a little bit of charge. Oh, it is already charged. <laughs> OK. So look at the projection. The, uh, the balloon is now, um, oh, maybe 30 centimeters away from the center, maybe 40. Boy, the angle is almost 45 degrees. And now I go, I double the distance. I go to about 90 centimeters. And look at that angle theta. The angle theta is now down to, oh, maybe 10 degrees. I will go back where I was. This angle is about 40 degrees. <laughs> and now it's very small. And when I go here, which is about a meter and a half, you can hardly see that there's any angle. It's only a few degrees. And so I've shown you only qualitatively that the electric field falls off very rapidly in the vicinity of a hollow, uniformly charged sphere, and that it doesn't fall off very fast if you are in the near vicinity of a plane. The second thing I want to show you has to do with the fact that the electric field inside a uniformly charged sphere is zero. Here I have a sphere which is not entirely closed. I can't make it closed because I want to demonstrate to you that there's no electric field inside when I charge it uniformly. And since I have to get inside, I need an opening. There's nothing I can do about it. Since there is an opening, the electric field is not exactly zero inside. It's only true if this is a complete closed surface and if the charge is uniformly distributed. But it's a good approximation. The opening is quite small. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this sphere. I'm putting charge outside. I use a device that we have not used before, but that's not so important. But here is now that hollow sphere. I'm going to put charge on there. Let's suppose it is positive charge. So this will be positively charged. Since it is a, a conductor, as we will learn, I think, the next lecture or at least this week, that the charge will automatically distribute uniformly. It only does that on a conductor. And now 